Oh. You're down since so what are you thinking? I don't know. Okay, so this is gonna get its own separate video because it's kind of a major modification. Um, it's gonna take me a couple of hours to, to figure it out. Um, but since the version two of this car, so 2022 spec last year, the original plan was to keep the power steering. Now, thinking ahead of the build plan, I knew we was gonna be using some wider wheels, some wider tires. So I kind of knew that we needed to retain power steering in some way, shape or form. Now, the original CG13 the 1.3 that we had in the 2021 season, luckily had a factory fitted power steering pump on the engine. Now, we couldn't retain the power steering pump on its engine purely because of the, the, the crank pulley clearance issues. Um, I would have explained this when we did the engine swap last year. Um, there's just no room on there to run a belt towards the back of the engine towards the firewall so we couldn't use a belt driven pump i did purchase a electronic trw power steering pump uh, which is up there somewhere from uh, an astra g now the astra g hydraulic electric pumps are the exact same part number as used in the porsche cup and the bosch motorsports pump same part number just the price difference was 40 quid from Breakers Yard, 900 quid from Bosch. But last year when we had a big meet at a workshop when the car was getting wired by Haltech, I kind of got peer pressured into removing the, the power steering in favor of a manual rack. Long story short, we're on a manual rack and it's just a handful to drive. The steering ratio with a manual rack just isn't nice. In hindsight, should have ignored everyone and kept the hydro electric pump and had power steering but i didn't and suffered as a result and we have just been struggling with steering all year and as pointed out in a recent viral video that i put up i got a lot of comments on my steering input now unless you've driven this car you don't understand how it steers and yes you know race car drivers are meant to keep both hands on the steering wheel crossing arms if needs be but it just is not physically possible to turn a lot of corners in this car without feeding the wheel and if you want to prove me wrong you're more than welcome to come drive the car and see if you can steer this thing keeping your hands on the wheel so anyway trying to find some solutions now Back in the enemy rally days, Nissan did produce a lot of factory built rally cars and they did have a quick rack, which I believe from research was a 2.2 lock to lock on a manual rack. However, those are extremely expensive. Managed to find one, 1200 quid plus VAT, um, expensive for a quick rack, especially when you consider for a Clio, it's about 200 quid for a quick rack and pinion. So, I just don't understand why they're so expensive for these little micros, especially since they're used in rallying. Um, it just seems to be they're expensive for no other reason than people are going to pay that money for them, which is a bit unfortunate, but also kind of shows you the market for them. Found a UK supplier who manufactures his own, £1,000. Found a guy in Northern Ireland who also has them, 800 quid. Still, I don't want to spend 800 quid on rack opinion, not when a clear one is 200 quid. We've got a couple of solutions here. So having the hydro electric power steering pump in there means we've got to cover all the hydraulic hoses and stuff and the only real place this can really go is in the back i mean we do need to place some weight in the back anyway so the only place for the pump really is in the back of the car and that means having two hoses front to back for the power steering pump that's weight it's potential fluid leaks inside the cabin so what a lot of people have been doing these last few years is fitting epass or electronic power assisted steering so what we have here is an epass unit from a mark 3 renault clio we've chosen this particular model because a lovely guy in portugal makes a standalone wiring adapter for them now what this does is obviously this electronic motor and you can adjust how light or how heavy you want the steering to be using this uh, handy little knob here. These are also nice and cheap. This was, I think, 50 quid. Uh, now, this isn't by itself going to solve the issue with the steering. Now, I've just put this front wheel back on. And if we come over here, 
So I want to try and get both the steering wheel and the wheel in the same shot, just so you don't think I'm being over dramatic. Now, in theory, if you've got your hands there, you can only really do half lock. So if we do half lock, that is literally our steering input, which is not really a great deal of input to get around a lot of corners, not without feeding the wheel. And the issue lies in is I believe this manual rack that we've got um, is from a, a base spec Nissan Micra. And for whatever reason, the Micras appear to have got a load of different ratios for the racks. Um, and I believe this one is a 3.2 or a 3.4 lock to lock. In fact, we can test that. If we come back over here, we can go one, almost two full rotations just on one lock. You know, that probably is a 3.4 or a 3.7 I think I found somewhere as well. So it's a lot of turns for a little car. Now I believe the power steering racks are 2.8, 2.7 lock to lock, but again, um, hydraulic. Don't really want to fit the hydraulic back on. What we've got here now is a, basically a, uh, a gearbox. And you install these units in line between the E-Pass unit and the steering rack. So it's pretty simple to do. Now these are widely used in uh, oval sports, especially in America. And essentially for one rotation in, you get two rotations out. So if our steering rack on the car is a 3.4, in theory, that will reduce it to, I'll do the maths, 15, 17, to 1.7 turns lock to lock. That will double our steering angle for the same amount of input that we're doing currently. And we're not gonna have to fight the extra wide tires as well. Um, because again, that has been a concern. With the wide tires of the manual rack last year, as soon as, it, as soon as it finds a groove, it just wants to sit in that groove and it's such a handful to control. So hopefully this is gonna be the solution for us for this year, at least I hope it is, anyway. So we need to get this mounted in the car. It's a bit of context, it's currently a Wednesday. Um, I'm filming about seven or eight different videos on this car this week, so you're gonna see this car in different stages of build throughout different videos throughout the week, and they're gonna all sort of like interlink. So because of that, you can already see we have stripped the dashboard out now. Now, I've been looking how Ilya has mounted his exact same E-Pass unit in his Clio. Because um, we we had the car down here this weekend. That's a, So make sure you head over to Rusky Wildfab and check the video on his channel when it's live to see what we did on his car. That's a good um, one! And his car had a custom cage and it has a dash bar going across. Uh, we haven't got a dash bar in his. But what we do have is this handy bit of structure here which the factory steering column is attached to. So the plan is, is to modify as much of this as possible. Luckily, we've not got to do a lot of messing around here and any changes that we do make. So if we do want to revert back to the factory column for whatever reason, um, I can just rip out a column from a spare car, such as that one there, and revert back to the old manual way of doing things. So yeah, we're gonna crack on. This is probably going to be a lengthy video because I'm probably already about eight minutes in just by waffling on an inch. So let's get some fabrication work done. So we're going to start off by removing the factory column and the steering wheel right down there. <clears throat> and these units are simply inserted um, in... So looking at it, the, the bolt holes are roughly in the same sort of place. If we count where the splines are for the steering wheel, we've got them roughly where we want it to be. 
I think I'm going to have to do the same route as Ilya did on the uh, Nubby Jock. And I think what I'm going to have to do is build uh, a framework to take up all these bolt holes. Now, another error I have made buying this is I didn't realise that not all Mark III Clio's didn't have the in and air adjustment. And it seems I've bought the one column which doesn't have that. It's not the end of the world, uh, but it would have been nice to have that extra adjustment. Uh, but we do have the up and down adjustment still. The best course of action is to make some sort of structure to pick up all these bolt holes. Then we can come back over here and we can then think about chopping... Uh, cutting up this tube here and kind of mounting it in there somewhere so um, I don't want to be here too late tonight so this is probably going to be done over a couple of nights at least so I think tonight what I'm going to do is build a, a structure for this to sit in I just hope that somewhere in my box of messy metal bits um, I've got the right materials to do it. I think I'm going to do it quite crudely with box section. It would be nice to have a nice tubular structure, uh, but time really is of the essence. But what I have discovered is that if you loosen this bolt here, and this bolt here, and then one on the opposite side, you do get movement in the column. So that. That is more than likely the collapsible feature. I'm seeing in uh, an accident. So I'm just debating what I want to do with this information. So I'm just debating what I want to actually do with this information. big guy so you know don't think I don't know that but this is just in my stomach so yeah um, I'm not sure what to do if I'm honest it's getting quite late it's 10 o'clock so what I think I might do is leave this as is and come back at it in the morning with a fresh pair of eyes but I'm thinking that if I collapse this column as uh, I was on about doing earlier, I think this might push this column back enough to uh, make it comfortable. But yeah, we'll come back in the morning and uh, I'll see if I come up with any more bright ideas. The next morning.
Right, so I'm happy with that fitment now. We've got about half inch between the back of the motor and the um, extinguisher nozzle here, but that's not gonna interfere with the extinguisher's purpose for obviously feet protection in the event of an accident. So, so what we'll do now is we'll take these two bits out, we'll take them over to the bench, we'll weld these two bits on here, make them a permanent feature. And then we can come back and do the next step, which will be making a, a structure to obviously stiffen this whole entire thing up. Because as you can see in a minute, it's a bit flimsy. For clearance for the motor, I've had to cut out this piece here. Now this piece here originally was a triangulated support for the steering column support. So, so we're gonna have to put some new support structure in here somewhere, but not the end of the world. Uh, that'd be a pretty easy job. So let's get these out, let's weld them up. Loads better, that is. Perfect. Yeah, so with the smaller steering wheel, that is much better now. Um, so, gonna go order myself a new steering wheel and then we'll start to strengthen all this assembly up. So I'm pretty happy with how that's come out and it's actually stronger than the original structure we took out and it's even stronger once you've got the actual power steering unit bolted on there so so I'm just gonna give this a lick of paint and then get it back in the car get the motor back in and then we can do the final part which is the UJ So I'm actually really proud of that. It's come out much better than I originally anticipated and it's absolutely solid. So dead chuffed with that. We've obviously still retained a bit of up and down movement. And if you loosen these two bolts aside and this bolt on the top as per earlier by cracks in the column, we can retain a bit of motion backwards. So now we've got the hard part done, we now need to put the reduction box in situ. So this is the 2-1 reduction we're going to use. And it just needs to really sit down here in between the UJs. And we've got two mounting holes here that we need to use. So obviously this unit needs to not rotate, it needs to be static, otherwise it will just 
spin around like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort out the UJ situation first because that will then dictate the position of these two holes. Uh, and then hopefully from there, we can come up with some sort of mounting solution. So let's head over to the welding bench and uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we've got our UJ here on the back of the column. I've got a second fit in here, and rather frustratingly, we are about 10 mil too short to uh, get onto this UJ here. But I definitely have got um, a datum, an idea of where we need to be. So I think what we need to do now is weld in that splined section that we cut off from the micro rack inside there. Um, and we'll be about home free with this part of it, but we'll go do that. And then we'll come back and do a second dry fit before we commit to welding it all up. Right, so successful dry fit, really happy with that. So what we'll do now is we'll take both of these UJs back off, back over to the bench, weld them fully, and then we can come back. And then all we need to do then is make a bracket for the reduction box. Um, got some ideas of how I'm gonna do that, but we'll discuss that when we get to that stage. Okay, so here we are on the home stretch, as they call it. So I've had to make this a two-piece bracket um, purely because we, the way I need to install this uh, reduction box means I can't sort of install it with a bracket on. So we've got one bracket which is bolted to the box. I welded a couple of nuts on here, so we've got some captive threads. And then we have this uh, secondary bracket. They're, they're not looking awfully pretty at this stage, but, but at this point, especially at half past 11 at night, it's gonna do. I'm not even gonna paint these brackets purely because of uh, kind of what I'm gonna go to bed. Uh, but yeah, so it kind of goes on like this. I'll just tighten these up quickly. So there you go, that's that done. As you can see, hopefully you can see in the video, we have got a bit of play in this bracket. So I think I'm gonna have to triangulate this bracket over to here maybe to the clutch plate that's magically appeared, appeared in this video. Uh, but I think for now it's, uh, it's getting on half past 11. Um, I'm kind of tired and I have reached this milestone where the car actually steers again so i think what we'll do now is we'll just sort of demonstrate the steering input now compared to what we started with so i'm going to call it tonight for this section of the video obviously we're not quite done yet we've still got the wiring to do uh, but it is getting on half past 11 and i'm quite tired i'm gonna go home so but before we do go home and continue this in the next scene um i really want to have a look at how much the steering angle has changed compared to what we started with at the start of the video. So hopefully I can get both the steering wheel and the tyre in one shot. So let's do half a turn. I think you agree. We've uh, 
got a lot more steering input there. So we've essentially halved the ratio of our rack. So, so I'm hoping that I'll make this car easier to drive, especially by the time we've got the two, four, fives. So I'm gonna call that a win so far, other than that bracket, which I'll, uh, I'll sort at some point tomorrow, if I get around to it. Um, I think that'll do us for the weekend anyway, if a push comes to shove. So all we've got to do now is, uh, is the wiring side of things. And for that, I'll see you in the next clip while uh, I go home, have a shower, get into bed, and then get back up at seven o'clock in the morning to come finish this off. So, uh, so uh, yeah, just excuse me a second. Oh, so, uh, so head of a jump cut, but uh, the install is actually done. There was just a bit too much going on in the workshop today to film with everyone going about. So yeah, I apologize. Um, but uh, all we've done this morning is uh, we've, wired in the controller for the e-pass unit to the drive fit the wiring happy with how it works so then we've gone back and put all the dashboard in and everything so uh, we've obviously got the, the howtech ic7 crudely mounted on a uh, an exhaust u-bolt because the clamp i ordered hasn't arrived today which is a bit annoying so uh, let's test this bad boy let's uh, make the car live so we've got the knob just down here and obviously full left is minimum input, full right is maximum input. So let's go to full minimum. And yeah, that's a bit of effort needed there. Then if we come over here and change it all the way maximum look at that one finger so uh so yeah we've definitely got offset so we've got all four wheels on the deck and that is a breeze to move left and right so that's working pretty good, dead happy with that. So so I'm gonna end this video here on the ePass conversion. If you've got any questions about what we've done here that I haven't answered in this video, drop a comment down below, I'll answer it the best I can. I apologize that the arse end of this video uh, was a bit shit, a bit blunt, uh, but you know, I don't think people wanna see me wiring in uh, this control box you know we're gonna pause the video for the installation instructions be my guest uh, but that's all you've missed really is that so yeah that's this video done as soon as i've done the outro i'm immediately going to start our uh, cadwell park rounds one and two time attack uh, vlog because I know everyone loves uh, the part of the videos where we build up to the start of the round. So with that being said, any questions, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, and don't forget to tell your nan about my lovely power steering conversion. I'll see you in the next video.